can approximately 327 Chainlink make you a crypto millionaire in 2025? Well, before I go any further, I know what you're thinking. Why the hell is he picked 327 Chainlink tokens? I'm going to answer that question and a lot more, guys. We're going to figure this out together. But also, I'm going to give you some really bullish facts that go into why I think Chainlink is going to have a very, very prosperous future, not just in 2025, but beyond as well. I think my predictions could honestly be blown out of the damn water if some of these things play out. You're going to want to stay tuned to the very end to find out what they are and the true implications of what they bring to the table. But first, why 327 link tokens? Well, it just happens to be exactly $2,000 at the current price of $6.10. Now, I like to go back in time sometimes and have a look at what things were like 12 months ago, because if, you know, for those who don't know, 12 months ago from today's date was essentially the inception of the current bear market. And funnily enough, we're actually trading in very pretty even levels between $5.50 and $6.50 right now for link. So back then the price was about $6.40. So you could acquire 327 link tokens back then for pretty much the same price. So yeah, if you're someone who's a big bull on Chainlink and you just want to keep buying and buying and buying, I've never seen a better project right now for this sort of thing, right? Because it's just been trading pretty equally the last 12 months, which is awesome, okay? So what about my actual price prediction? Because hey, that's the whole point of the video and I'm just going to get it out of the way straight away because the real meat and potatoes, the real fun stuff actually comes after this. So in 2025, we obviously have to find a price. For those who don't know, the price prediction itself can only come from two things two variables. One is the demand, the market cap. What do we think the market cap is going to be at that point in time? How valuable is the network? And the second thing is, of course, how many tokens are going to be in circulation at that point? Now, the typically easiest thing to find is the how many tokens are in circulation, but because Chainlink's got a very weird vesting type thing in distribution, I didn't really find anything. But what I did find was Chainlink has announced that they're going to try to bring 7% of the total supply out every single year which is just a nice easy 70 million tokens so i've kind of used that to get a rough idea of how many tokens will be out in 2025 which happens to be about 670 give or take tokens okay that's a very important thing to find for all of you guys trying to find price predictions out there as well now the demand side of things well i'm going to go ahead and say look i think the lowest point is going to be 11x okay demand is going to be about 33.5 billion dollars that's about again a 10x from today's prices our time market goes about 3 billion dollars and putting the price at about 50 bucks. That's the minimum I think it will definitely go to. Again, not financial advice, guys, but the max side of things, actually, this might surprise some of you because it is a very popular and impressive project. I've put its price at 150 bucks on the max, but this is reasonable. This isn't like obscure max. This is reasonable max. It's a 24X from today's price and the market cap being about $100 billion. So the question is, Kyron, that's not really that much. Like a 24X? Really? Like from today's price, that doesn't sound too good to me. And you'd be right. So obviously we can't become a millionaire from 327 channeling tokens. But the thing is, this for me is a longer term hold. Okay, this isn't a hold that you're going to want to just stick around with for 2025. Right, so Chainlink, in my opinion, is one of the safest projects to kind of hedge into for future because, um, and, you know, it can't be outcompeted. Right? It's got the monopoly on the Oracle service. But We'll kind of touch more on this later on in the video. So to answer that question, look, there's uh, definitely room to grow. But I also want to give you my 2029 price prediction as well, because the thing is, I mean, look, if you invest $2,000 into anything, I think we can pretty well comfortably say you shouldn't expect to become a millionaire. Now, I've got a good little strategy I like to you know, tell people I've recently found out myself was that definitely take all your profits in 2025. And if you can, if it's reasonable, we should reinvest all of that profits you've made to compound it back into you know the subs the next bull uh, bear market right so 27 to 28 because i think chain link in 2030 can go to about 250 bucks ignore this 99,000. it's supposed to be 81,000, right so i do think that the price can go to 250 bucks which means the market cap is going to have to actually be 220 billion dollars right and the reason why the market cap's gone up over a 2x and the price has only gone up 100 bucks is because we've had a lot more tokens potentially come into circulation. Again, this is working off that 7% figure year on year. So again, 880 million tokens, and that's kind of how you get the price, right? So you can essentially turn $2,000 in the long haul into 81,750, which is a 41X. But as I said moments ago, 
the actual best way to go ahead and do it is literally just take your 327 link tokens that you buy now, hypothetically speaking, right? Not financial advice. And then you sell it at the top at, let's just say a nice 20X, for example, if you did that well, and then reinvest all of that earnings into the, you know, whatever price it might be in 2027, 2028, and you will actually get more link tokens out of it potentially, which will obviously in turn get you more returns. So yeah, technically you can definitely turn 2000 link into a lot more than this, but that ain't this type of video, right? But I guess the overarching question is guys, can it go a lot higher? And I definitely think it can. So this screen is actually super important to understand. And before we get into the meat and potatoes, I actually want you guys to think about this for a second, because I know a lot of people out there are going to hear me talk about, you know, Link and go, oh, okay, he's telling me to buy at this level. And, you know, we're going to try to sell at this, you know, whatever, maybe $150 level, like, oh, I'm going to try to time it. No, you shouldn't time it. Don't be like person A. Person A is someone who tries to buy at, let's just say, 50 cents at $1 and then tries to, you know, time a top. You know, they might sell all their tokens at $1.75 over here. That's bad. You might get 2.3x out of it in this hypothetical situation, but be person B, no pun intended, right? And just dollar cost average down because you dollar cost average at $1.75, 50 cents, and 25 cents, you actually end up at a better average, right? 6.25 or 62 cents, essentially. And obviously, if you sell at the same point, you're actually getting more out of it, right? You're getting actually 2.8x. And then you don't want to be like person A on the other side of it, right? And they want to buy all their tokens at like 25 cents and then sell them at what they think is good levels. If you hypothetically again, buy at that same point and then let us sell, you can get more, right? So instead of 600% or a 6X, you can get a 6.5X. So what we gotta do is combine the best of both worlds, dollar cost average and ladder sell. What happens here is we actually secure the most gains possible in the safest way. Now, this has got nothing to do with this video, but I just thought I would share that with everyone out there because ultimately it's something that people need to learn. So if you thought that was impressive and you really did think that you you know, it's going to challenge your thoughts. I would really appreciate a like on this video for all the effort. But anyway, let's get straight back into it. So again, can it go higher? Can Chainlink actually blast past my price prediction levels, especially for all you Chainlink, I could say experts or just fiends, if you will, respectively? Uh, you guys are like, nah, 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 definitely more than that, Kyron. Definitely, definitely more than that. Well, here's how I think that you could actually be right. So the first thing, and this is really exciting, guys, Chainlink's kind of coming out with a product that's going to be a game changer for cryptocurrency, right? interoperability they're essentially going to be competing for quant but web3 inadvertently not really competing with quant but you guys get the idea so ccip what is it well it's called cross-chain interoperability protocol right it allows dApps to send any messages directly to one another cross-chain users can send arbitrary messages and transfer tokens across multiple networks which is a great step to mass adoption right now we don't have that we think we have that we think we have this everything is becoming more connected really it's not because you have these networks that are connecting to individual token bridges or little messaging protocols that are only as good as the networks that are connected to them, right? And you have to almost have one port to go into it. For example, Moonbeam. Pretend there was an ACE network on Polkadot. To access, essentially, hypothetically speaking, the Polkadot ecosystem, you know, you'd have to go through Moonbeam. So any network connected to, you now the way Polkadot's set up isn't quite this way, but it's a good example. To get into Polkadot or to and from, you'd have to go through Moonbeam. So all that traffic would be siphoned through one place. This is akin to a lot of networks out there. But what Chainlink's saying is just, you know, get the adapts on the different ecosystems and the dApps themselves can connect straight to, you know, other dApps on other networks. It's awesome. It makes so much sense. To have this kind of like mass adopted Web3 ecosystem, you're going to have to have dApps that are going to be able to do that, right? You just shouldn't be able to rely on one place or one application on an entire network to make that sort of thing happen, okay? So as I said, you know, Quant for Web3, so CCIP allows any network, which is EVM or not, doesn't matter, to connect seamlessly together, uh, which also offers a secure inbuilt token bridge as well, pretty much unlocking solid liquidity, right? So the release is this year we don't have an exact date yet but you know when it does come you can download a bit chainlink's going to blow up in price at least temporarily okay so i want to just point out here arbitrary messages and transfer tokens so these are two different things but it's important we make this distinction because with current token bridges right we've got wormhole for example here in ren network a lot of these you know probably not wormhole is a good example of this but a lot of these networks like for example ren they can only do one type of thing token transfers you send me tokens here and we'll send it over to this address in a very slow methodical and sometimes even very dangerous way okay not really secure but of course you know that's only got one sort of option right you really want to be able to do anything so a transfer of tokens is one thing 
I can send my tokens over to this network from this network. Cool. Okay. But what if I want to do a special type of message? What if I want to send that network over there a series of steps? I want to send my tokens over to a liquidity pool, swap it for this token, like DAI, and then use my DAI and borrow some Ethereum and then get the Ethereum that I've just borrowed back over to me all in one step. Well, this is the type of arbitrary messages I was talking about that CCIP will allow plus a lot more okay so this current method right now even though we have these token bridges is just extremely inadequate right limited functionality as i mentioned they are very dangerous even though token hacks don't happen all that often when they do happen it's typically a lot of money and it's money that no one wants to wake up and realize wow i've just you know had all my money gone from something that wasn't my fault and chances are you want to get your money back so again you also have this really horrible design system where you might have your different networks over here and by the way these green and red stop signs are dApps on the networks and you have to kind of get all your dApps to send through whatever they want to do to one network like in that moonbeam example and then flick it through to a token bridge and then that token bridge then can communicate with the dApp that you want on a different network okay so this is inadequate it's just it doesn't make sense it's like you know we're talking dinosaur language here so in comes ccip and what this is going to allow is for the dApps themselves to connect to other dApps directly but after no more worry about trying to go through a middleman right the middleman it technically is Chainlink, but it can all be built directly on a chain link and the way i've seen Chainlink kind of uh push this in the marketing is it's like the tcp ip or like the internet protocol where you can build and have different messages and just pretty much distribute information on it's just like this but you're distributing kind of value in a way right you're distributing sort of tokens and messages interacting with web3 in a way okay and also the really cool thing is you can also build applications directly on ccip just like quant for example right and that can instantly be interoperable with every single network on here again the really big unlock here is that dApps can connect directly to dApps it's just brilliant and it's awesome okay so the second thing now this is something that's not really that sexy but people do need to know about and they're upgrading their economics economics 2.0 now there is a lot to go through here this kind of this diagram outlines it so i didn't want to bore you guys i know that most of you don't want to watch my videos at least these videos to get real into this sort of thing so i'm not going to spend too much time on it but what tailing have actually mentioned themselves is it's going to be a virtual a virtuous rather cycle of adoption and value capture okay this is important because these guys have publicly now said they're going after the thing that i like to look for in networks because it's prosperous it, it creates a very advantageous environment for the network and for its investors us so as i always say right economics while it's very boring it is an integral aspect of any cryptocurrency okay so this is actually quoted from Chainlink themselves, and they say Chainlink Economics 2.0 creates a virtuous cycle, which is obviously this, that increases value capture of the Chainlink network. Let me just stop it right there and say, this is so important. Chainlink right now has been pretty inadequate about capturing the value. They've processed billions and trillions of uh, transactions and value of the transactions or, you know, endpoints themselves between the, obviously it's an Oracle service, right? So between the real life source itself and then bring it onto the network, it's, it's integral, right? But it's just had a really bad time of capturing that value. So they're increasing things like their staking and, and uh, security of the network as well. So it really is strengthening the value capture, meaning that obviously more linked tokens are going to be required and taken out of circulation, therefore hopefully boosting the price up. Okay, it's very important we understand that. And of course, feeling the adoption of decentralized services and the growth of the Web3 ecosystem. So they're really pushing themselves forward as... And they do so much, right? Not just an Oracle service. They do things like VRFs, right? So they provide uh, just an inbuilt, direct, easy to use service for any sort of dApp to just go ahead and use in part of their, you know, part of their application itself, okay? So, and also with the CCIP. So it really is looking to become not just an Oracle, it's looking to become a very integral part of the entire ecosystem. Now, this is actually awesome because for those who know how much I've preached about Chainlink, this really speaks to one really important aspect of not just crypto but online businesses that keeps it active and alive for a long time and that's this right embedding we'll get that in just a second so obviously you know Chainlink has a monopoly on oracles right it's got established connections which is super important because in the example of you know api3 a competitor to Chainlink, if they create something interesting and then useful Chainlink already has the connections and resources to first create that product and then give it to all of their sort of sources and then obviously implement it. So you just, it's at a point right now where it just can't be out competed, right? Once this CCIP comes in, 
once all this stuff uh, starts blowing up even more and they can capture this value, there's no stopping it. There is no stopping it. I will challenge anyone all day, every day in the comments about that exact fact, okay? So what about demand? Well, of course, think about any company that has a monopoly on their own market. You know, they just can't be outcompeted. So we circle back quickly now to embedding. It's obviously a powerful form of what's called defensibility. And it pretty much just essentially means Chainlink isn't going to be um, leaving anytime soon, right? Other networks you might get a bit worried about because there's a chance that they might be, they might run out of money or, you know, they might be outcompeted, not Chainlink, right? Because this thing called embedding where a product or service, aka Chainlink's Oracle service, it's got its like randomization functions like the VRF, right? And it's got now CCIP. These are going to be so inbuilt and integrated what's called embedding, embedded into other products and services that if we got Chainlink today or over the course of a month and just pulled it out of the market and said, no more Chainlink, guys, you would find a lot of projects would just kaput. And the ones that could ultimately transition to, let's say, API 3 or other Chainlink competitors, those competitors wouldn't be able to sustain the demand that's come from Chainlink. And they wouldn't have as much, you know, they would have the sources Chainlink has in the real world, for example, to make those sort of integrations happen seamlessly. So guys, Chainlink's on a massive tear for 2023. Again, I do think it has the capabilities to push past my price predictions simply because they're focusing on the things that I would suggest that Chainlink would have to focus on to boost past those. Again, the economics, the value capture itself, that's super important. And they're also coming out with like a game changer. Okay, so if you want to learn more about Chainlink in the rough sense, click that video on your left. And if you want to watch a really, really fun video on 10 QNT versus 20,000 HBAR, which would be better for the most returns possible, they are on your screen. Now, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you would like and subscribe for more daily content, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.